Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Lupin the Third, the First. To start things off, I have to say, the animation in this movie is absolutely breathtaking. The Marza Animation Planet and TMS Entertainment, who are the studios that did the animation, to my loose understanding, it's really outstanding work. And with CG animation, the character designs have always sort of felt sort of samey, and we've seen people break out from that a lot more recently, um, which is something that probably should have happened more in the 2010s, but whatever. But now we finally really are able to translate things, much like how they did in the Peanuts movie. I know other people have made that comparison. It's what they do here with the Lupin characters. They look like the cartoon designs. It looks almost like lifelike, but not. It's, it's really wonderful, all the renderings and how they design those characters. That is absolutely amazing probably one of the best 2d to kind of i guess 3d even though what i'm watching is 2d but you know what i mean or traditional to cg translations i've ever seen it, it's just really amazing i would love to see more done with this kind of care they clearly cared about the character designs they understood the rich history of animation that went on with lupon and you can tell that and it's just really awe-inspiring the animation i mean just for the animation alone this movie is absolutely worth seeing. I mean, that's the reason I saw it. I mean, a Lupin the Third movie, there hasn't been one in a while. Um, I don't know if I would have gone as out of my way to see this. I was like, okay, I have to see this before I talk about all the movies in 2020. It just felt like one of those big ones I needed to check off my list just for the animation. An animated movie is not just about its animation. If it was, this would be one of the best movies of the year and one of the best animated movies of the year, bar none. The story uh is uh not uh let's say the greatest but it goes into a couple things i do think when you have a real seamless adventure film i do find myself and i feel find a lot of people not appreciating it as much the first time i felt like when i saw the adventures of tintin i didn't actually like it that much the first time i saw it i enjoyed it but i was like yeah you know it was like a light trifle of a film which is sort of what these movies sort of are so like that's sort of a dumb <laughs> Thing. well I guess you get the movie you just don't like what you got whatever I don't feel like I fell in love with Tintin until like I saw it on TV and I just put it on and I was like in awe of it and I did feel like that when I was watching this film I was like you know I feel like if I mean there no TV channels in America are gonna play this but if it was on like my friends are watching it at a convention if we get to do those again or something like that I probably would like it more if I had a few beers or something like that and I'm watching it on a second, third rewatch. I think I would love this movie a lot more because I, I do feel like the adventure genre or the action adventure genre or whatever, like the Indiana Jones type of thing is underappreciated other than like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Although Raiders of the Lost Ark is just a wonderfully made film. It just kind of goes underappreciated a lot. I think people just look at the bubblegum poppiness of it and sort of ignore like the real kind of like hardcore filmmaking that goes into making those kind of films. And Raiders of the Lost Ark is obviously a very extreme example of that. So that's why that was just like too good to ignore, I guess. Um, but Lupin the third, the first, or Lupin three, the first, or I don't know. It's, it's not really just that. It's also that I think Lupin as a character, I'm not an expert on Lupin the third. I've seen, I've reviewed the castle of Cagliostro or Cogliostra or whatever. <laughs> I think it's the Castle of Cogliostro and the entire first series. And I've seen the first movie as well, but I've never reviewed that. And I think where how Lupin works best is when he's like robbing people and he's not saving the world. And I just don't, I think Castle of Cagliostro might be the best example of like a bigger story type of thing. But this, I would have preferred he was just like getting some gold or some diamonds or something like i like lupon when he's like you know he has that fiendish grin he has that you know him as a character you kind of love how mischievous he is but i kind of don't like the character as much when he's like oh well i'm gonna do like the right thing and i'm like Ugh, i don't need to see him do the right thing i just want to see lupon steal some stuff we can just watch a movie where lupon and his buddies steal a bunch of crap and he laughs and it's all fun. I'd be totally down with that. In the show, he does that all the time. In the movies, 
I feel like they make like these big adventure type things. And I would just much rather like a simple Loop on the Third movie. Or this had been just a simple like direct translation of Loop on the Third. Because one of the things I did like about the Peanuts movie, I will say, is that it was just like pretty simple Peanuts stories. And so if you don't like Peanuts, you're not going to like the Peanuts movie, you know? And in this, it's like, if someone was like, is this a great example of Lupin? I'd be like, well, not, eh, uh, you know, it's fine. And then I'm so sick of like secret Nazi movies. I mean, I don't think Nazis are really, the new Nazis are secret anymore. The whole idea of like, you know, there's these secret evil organizations waiting to sort of billow up and become a thing again, whether it's Captain America Civil War or The Force Awakens or I'm sure 20 million others. It's just a plotline I've seen a lot and I get like he's trying to get this diary that's like the Breslin diary or Breston diary or Josh Brolin diary. I'm not sure. But they, they have this diary and you know it will unlock this crazy futuristic weapon that was going to be they're going to give to Hitler because Hitler's been alive this whole time and they're going to give him this weapon that they're going to unlock with this diary. I would have much rather they're like fighting to get money and the money was going to be used to bring back you know the nazis or whatever i didn't really need like this super futuristic weapon thing that just felt like really boring like how many times can i put up with this plot and it didn't feel like they were doing anything with that or saying anything with it it was just like you know this is a big movie so we got to do that and that just felt really boring and it stinks because to do that really stupid boring like big laser weapon thing there's that really cool sequence where he's like flying through that tunnel with the lasers and like that is like one of the best sequences of the year it's just absolutely beautifully animated it's wonderful it's like everything that's cool about lupon and like when you have a great lupon action sequence like it's it's really unfortunate because it feels like like they're uh like you know push this thing to 11 on so many categories but like the story just feels really traditional i also don't like like if you're gonna use lupon like use all the characters like like goemon i think i'm not gonna say anyone's name right i don't think but like he wasn't used very well fujiko main i i felt like she wasn't used well enough so like lupon could go around with uh leticia and i was like that whole thing is just maybe not up my alley necessarily aesthetically this is a very beautiful movie and they did a very good job making it um, in terms of aesthetics and shots and like the storyboards and all that stuff, just absolutely top notch. I just wish they had a really good script that was like very Lupin or just him like stealing a bunch of gold or something. I don't care. Like just like no more. Like that was one thing I didn't like about the first Lupin movie. It's like this big thing. He's got to save the world or something. I don't even remember be honest with you i just remember i didn't like it and i was really disappointed and i like when lupon's a little like crazier and mischievous and stuff i think i'm more of into that kind of lupon anyway um and i think the character works a little bit better you know we don't need to like make lupon sort of be a nice guy i can just have him steal stuff like there's nothing really wrong with that sure you didn't get the kind of lupon that i would necessarily like but the plot i did get is something i've seen so many times kind of detracted from how good the animation was because it was just like oh this again Oh yeah, okay, yeah, no, destroy the world, I get it, that's, uh, secret Nazis, cool, cool. It didn't make me as excited as the animation. I felt like there should have been a good story, or even a routine Lupin story I would have been fine with. I probably would have liked that a lot more, but it kind of just, like, falls to pieces in its kind of, like, really routine, big, big blockbuster kind of movie thing, rather than just focusing on being an awesome Lupin movie, which in a lot of places it really soared in. It just the whole package didn't unfortunately come together, which stinks because if Lupin was behind the whole thing, you know it would have, and he would have smirked and done a cool pose on his way out, and you would have laughed and clapped and been like, man, Lupin the Third is awesome. Instead, I'm just looking at a really well animated, routinely written film that I, you know, will probably enjoy watching the trailers and clips from, but I have no real reason to watch again if this was really what the result was. So if you have seen Lupin the Third, the first, and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.